Hi, my name is Brandon with SalesPad, and this is a short video on our Sales Line Mass Update module. Now, what Sales Line Mass Update can be used for is updating multiple line items based on the sales batch, customer, sales document number. Um, and it's very similar to our Sales Document Mass Update module. Main difference, as you know, uh, Sales Document Mass Update will update the document level information or header level information where sales line mass update will update the line item information. We do have some security around this module. If I go to my admin menu and go to security editor, you can see I'm on sales line mass update here. So we have just the basic ones that can allocate, can forward, can unallocate. Um, we do have some security on what you can actually do in the module. So can update prices, that's set to true, printing's allowed. One security setting that we do have in here that's not typical is a called price source exclusion list. So if you use uh, sales pad group pricing or if you use customer special pricing, you can actually choose in here if I key in uh, that type of pricing, whether it's group or special pricing, it's going to look at that source, that price source. And if that's in here in your security, then the update prices will not affect those items that are pulling price from from whatever you specify in here. Sales batch is allowed so you can limit what what batches that users can modify those lines in. So say for example you have an AR batch that you don't want users making modifications in, you could basically key in all batches besides that one. Sales document types allowed basically lets you choose um, the document types that you want them to be able to modify within sales line mass update. And then finally warehouse is allowed. If you don't want users to be able to modify documents that exist in uh, other warehouses. So maybe you're in one location, your warehouse location, and you have other users in your north location. This would be where you would specify you only want them modifying documents or lines within the warehouse location. So I'm going to go back to sales line mass update here. And this can be accessed a couple different ways. Uh, just on my main ribbon here, you'll see sales line mass update. Also, if you go to your modules menu and go to sales, you'll see that sales line mass update is in here as well. So you'll notice below the sales line mass update tab that there you have your basic functions here. You can close, you can search, or you can print. Transfer to invoice would allow you to transfer those lines to an invoice. And keep in mind if you're going to do that, that you will need to have partial invoicing enabled. And that can be enabled if you go to your modules menu and settings. And if I just type in partial, you'll see that allow partial sales batch transfers. You just want to set that to true. Forward, that would move those lines or that document from that batch to the next batch based on what you have specified in workflow. So say for example if I go to workflow here I have a document in new order and you hit forward it would then go to your next queue which is complete. You also have allocate which would allocate that line if it was back ordered. You also have unallocate which if you are using blocked items within your system it would unallocate that specific line. Update lines. What that would do is if you make a change to uh, one of the line item fields, it'll actually update those lines, which I'll show you here in a second. Update price. So if you're making price changes to your lines, you would actually click that button instead of update lines. And then finally, delete lines. Pretty self explanatory, but would just delete the lines, whatever um, are in your search results or whatever you have selected. So down below that we have our search by fields and you can see there's eight different fields that you can actually search by. So you can do things like key in the document number, um, the doc ID, customer, item number, requested ship date. What I'm going to show today is the sales batch. So maybe we want to look at everything that's in my new order sales batch. And you can just type that batch name in or if I click my drop down you can check the checkbox next to the batch once you find it. So I'm going to search my new order batch and if I hit search you'll notice that you get some search results here. 
So you can see down below, this is just the just the sales pad grid. You can fully customize this any way you want. You'll also notice that this exclamation point is next to this one because based on the warehouse that this line's associated with, I do not have any inventory available for it. So you can see that these fields on here are some pretty basic sales line fields. Um, one that you may have not seen before is this percent of inventory. And what that means is based on the quantity you have within here, the percent of inventory is what percent of inventory that quantity is. So I have a quantity of two for my 100 XLG. And you can see that I have 66 on hand. So basically that's saying that this two quantity is 3% of that 66 that I have. So again, that's percent of inventory is not a field you're gonna see a lot in SalesPad, but it's something we, we do have in our sales line mass update screen. Now you'll notice above the search results there is a mass update fields. And if I click this arrow, you'll see that it brings me to this menu here. You'll see that I have line item fields here. You have a separate section for price fields. You have address line address fields that you can change as well if you wanted to. So say for example, I want to, for all these lines, I want to change the requested ship date. So they're all in my new order. I'm going to change the requested ship dates on all these lines to this Friday. So I'm going to choose that date. So what that'll do is if I hit update lines, what that's going to do is actually update every single line within here to that specific requested ship date. If I had selected lines only checked up here in the upper right, that would only update this requested ship date to based on the lines that I have selected down below in my search results. But I'm going to uncheck that. And let's go ahead and now if I hit update lines, it's going to ask if I want to update the seven selected lines and I'm going to hit yes here. And you can see that now it went through and updated the requested ship date on every single line item that was in my search results. So now if I hit OK, let's just pull up one of these so I can show it. You can now see that every single line in that batch that showed up in my search results now has a requested ship date of the 29th. These mass update fields, these are just standard sales pad fields, but if I right click here and go to my customized layout screen, you can see that I can pull in sales line user defined fields as well. So maybe you wanted to update the vendor on all of your, your line fields. I can just drag in this vendor field here and make sure you always save your layout once you're making changes. And now you can see that I can actually choose, maybe I want to update the vendor field on all of these line items. Now that can be done. So like I said, you can you can modify this. It's only going to affect the sales line mass update screen here. And you can modify it to show your user defined fields. So next I want to show is the update price. So what that'll do is if you have a line item that has different uh, price than your list price that's set up within GP, that's what update price would be used for. So right now I have it pulling in $23 for these HD20s, but I can go in here and manually we're just going to change it to the price of 20 bucks. So I'm going to hit update $20, hit update lines. And basically now I just set the unit price for those lines to be $20. But say for example, like I was mentioning, if you use update price, if I highlight both of these and go to update price and hit yes, it's basically going to look and see what I have set up for the list price for those items in GP. Say, okay, here's the old price that it was at. Here's my new price. Now it's pulling it back from GP. So that's what the update price button would be used for. Finally, the last button I want to show is the delete lines. So pretty self-explanatory. If I want to delete a line off of a sales document, you can do that from here. So maybe I want to get rid of I no longer carry 100 XLGs. I've already let that be known to my customers. I can just select all my 100 XLGs, hit delete lines, and now you can see it deleted those lines off of those orders. And so now you can see my 100 XLGs no longer showing here. 
And if I click on the document, now there's no more 100 XLGs on those documents. So that was everything on the sales line mass update module. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, we have plenty more available on our website at www.salespad.net.